What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Week 13 Swolecast here at RotorGrinders.com, the post-Thanksgiving edition, coming out a day late, and hopefully we won't be a dollar short. Uh, I am with my guest, Davis Maddock. Davis, how are you? I don't really think I'm a guest on this show. I think I would be considered a, a co-host or a, a featured speaker. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we got Peter Overzet with us, co-host of the uh, Swolecast. Peter, how are you? <laughs> All right, that was uh, that was a duck call for those uh, wondering, and we'll. Is, uh, is that what a duck call sounds like? I thought it was like, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now everyone has to do their duck call. Davis, let's hear yours. Uh, no, I refuse. I thought you were sir, a sir, we are not comedy touts on no. this on this show. This is only serious analysis from I here on out. Total maybe a duck call. I don't know. I don't know how to do yeah. it. I may have got I, a turkey I, call with mixed up with a duck call. The My commenters fellow, will let us know. Uh, fellow Southerners, not going to let me live that one down. All right, we got Mr. Total O five. Uh, Dan, how was your Thanksgiving? Uh, not no. great. Not great. Okay. I mean. Ideal Thanksgiving for me is just like stay in my own house and just watch football all day. That yeah. Didn't, that didn't happen. So anything other than that is just not great. We have a super animated Tuttle for the show today. It's yeah. like he is, he is ready to Let, ball out for the next hour. I prefer Let, featured speaker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Let me hey, tell Tuttle, you. Tuttle, are you in a food coma? <laughs> that trip to fan. Trip man. to fan, man. Trip to fan Tuttle. <laughs> Week 13. Uh, we were, so, we were leaving Wednesday, uh, to go back home, and 30 minutes into the trip, my four year old decides she's going to projectile vomit everywhere. We stop, 30 minutes after that, the two year old says, well, I'm not gonna let her outdo me, I'm going to throw up everywhere. So for the remainder of the trip, it was uh, three and a half hours of just like dueling vomit playing. And uh, my wife was a saint for just holding empty hot dog trays uh, from the gas station as we made our way home. So that was my Thanksgiving. Uh, followed, cool. Yeah, followed by all day yesterday. And I thought it could be any worse than that Saints game happened. And then it just got worse. That's so. uh that's what you get for showing your children your David Blau lineup sucker Dave. <laughs> they just couldn't stomach it. <laughs> I was hey, what do you think about this one? I was on <laughs> cloud nine after that first touchdown, and then somehow every other quarterback except Drew Brees, the one tied for the most points, got there yesterday. So Blau didn't even matter. But it's okay because you know what? Well, Blau, Blau would have mattered if you had him with Galladay. Like that would have incre- like your your EV in those lineups would have been a lot better because Galladay was like ten percent or less in most stuff. I had Blau, Beasley, Miller. You had, I mean, you had him with Marvin. Yeah, yeah you probably had him with him. Marvin, bro. Yeah, I Galaxy classic, Day. classic, yeah, classic soccer Dave there. <laughs> that I was would. a uh, that was a blitz call. Actually, the Blitz loved Marvin. And I thought Marvin was going to be lit after that second touchdown. Uh, shout out to Derek Cardi, big, big listener of the Blitz, for just basically putting Davis on blast for completely fabricating a Blitz stat and projection on the, the Gill cast. Davis. I mean, good for him, because I literally don't look at any projections other than what we have at, at DR. So Then why would you I, say that? <laughs> Because I was trying to prove Nate wrong, and that's all that matters. Like, all that matters is trying to own Nate in the moment, and I know he didn't know either, so I knew that he wasn't going to rebuke me in the middle of the conversation, and that was all that mattered. So you bluffed using another man's projection system. Yeah, that's okay. correct. On on a public... All right. Yeah. We're, We're all been... just pawns in Davis Maddox's world. He Listen. moves them around as he see fits for his agenda. Yeah. Listen, in the grand scheme of thing in the public arena in DFS this past week, it's it really just a blip on the radar. I'm happy that we get to talk some football, even if it's committing to the bit. Peter, let's just start with you in this outfit uh, that you have going on. 
Um, yep. So the story behind this outfit is someone threatened to ask for a refund on their Roto Grinder subscription if I wasn't decked out in full duck hunting gear. So I spent an entire Wednesday <laughs> trying to round up this outfit and I just saved RG a sub. So you're welcome guys. And also. That's not a duck call. Yeah, it just can't be terrible. a duck call. That's it's terrible. like Birdman. <laughs> it's like cat calling somebody. Really. <laughs> it's all I got. Um. All right. Well, uh, that person was actually Go Sixers Go seventy six. The uh, GSG, the Mega Mind. Yeah. The the high stakes player. Guys won like a million dollars like four fella, different times. Yeah. Fellow <laughs> fellow hauls in two hundred grand every other week. Uh, he should have just paid paid. Like you for a camo suit. Piece. Yeah, he should have just ordered you a full. Like he should have actually just ordered a duck blind to your house, and you could have done the show inside of it. It's right. nice that I can be the monkey with a miniature symbol for all the people who actually win money at DFS. <laughs> <laughs> Great arrangement we have. <laughs> you did have a very good line. You you crushed last weekend, and I and I was proud of you. Do you want to say anything about the Patrick Laird stuff before we continue? Or do you just want to just leave that where it is? I think it's – I think the week spoke for itself. I guess the one thing I'll say is there's a lot of brothers that I'm still praying for. He'll, you'll keep them in your heart, though. I will. I mean, Dave, there's a lot of people out there that we need to pray for. He did for. play a season high in snaps. So, oh, man. I, I thought saw... it was disingenuous, personally. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do people know that he actually did almost score a touchdown, though? Like, he was running into the end zone, got the target, and it got batted down by a lineman. But if, like, Fitzpatrick would have gotten I thought it he there, actually – I saw the one where he ran around, like, two yards short of the end zone and then just completely missed the catch. He, here, It got batted say, down by a lineman, bro. It wasn't his fault. I will say one other real thing. So I was asking people for screenshots of lineups where they won with Patrick Laird. And because all of those $5,000 running backs all flopped the yeah. Lindsey, Miles Sanders, people who played Patrick Laird got up to Michael Thomas and Christian McCaffrey and had good lineups because they weren't playing he, the other He outscored James backs. White, who I played in cash games on DraftKings.com. Yeah. He actually opened you up to a winning lineup construction. Yeah, especially if if you went to uh, to Ertz, like like I said. All right, um, over that's overview of the week. We are recording this on a Friday, a day later, so we we do have some injury news, including Damian Willis or Damian Willis, Damian Williams being out. Peter, what's the overview of the week? The over that under overview of the week. I mean, I think. Everything this week starts and ends with Duck Hodges. It's just how you want to stack him. Are you going with James Washington, uh, the shower narratives? And, you know, are you going with Deontay Johnson? I mean, there's lots of different ways you can approach it, but I'll tell you what's, uh, we're having a feast, Dave, and I'll tell you what's on the, on the menu. It's Duck. Tell me. I want to know. It's Duck. Oh, yeah, Duck. duck. Yeah, yeah, we're having Duck. Okay. <laughs> hey, I have, uh, I have some breaking news. Is it, let Uh-oh. us hear it. Kyler Murray is questionable for week 13. Oh, I got oh. Call Chow. <laughs> <laughs> Chow! Chow! Get in the Discord, bro. Oh, man. All right. Uh, well, that would certainly shake some things up. Uh, have they taken the, the line off, um, line down as far as Vegas goes? I will go, I'll go look at Pinnacle right now. Oh, man. That, uh, that would definitely change some things. Imagine, I, I, I'm gonna guess it's live right now. If, if Kyler doesn't play, basically the, the five teams I got through with the best ball stuff is just, they're dead. Uh, no, I'm wrong. It's, it is off the board. Oh, it's a shocker. Um, well, that definitely changed some things. We'll, uh, we'll do it live as far what, as our what, analysis. What, is that, what does that change? What, what does that change for the main slate? Uh, it's, my best ball teams really. I mean, what well, actually changes like, who the backup quarterback is? That was like one of the best games to stack too in tournaments, was it not? You're, you're into stacking the, dust, the the dusty Rams. All right, yeah. this smells a little fishy, right? He he practiced in full, and then they listed him as questionable. So I mean, like, what's the deal? Pulled a hammy at practice. Yeah, pull, yeah. Pulled up, yeah, for sure. For sure. 
This is this is uh this is what happens when we try and take the show seriously. It's just not entertaining for anyone. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, that's what happened. Oh man, you guys. You guys maybe make- maybe he <laughs> maybe he slipped in the shower after practice. Who's the backup quarterback? Because Kyler Murray's always been kind of a system quarterback, anyways. I think. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I could step in. Isn't there. it? Uh, oh it man, Brett, it is Brett Hundley. Hundley, yeah, from Ooh. Green Bay. Hey, oh, yeah. Dave, Green what Bay, Cleveland. Dude, you dude, you dude, 40, 40, 4,200 cash game lock, bro. I'm not Give even kidding that. about this. He's a lock. <laughs> Twenty six point floor. Dude, did Brett Hundley just ruin Duck Hodges' week? <laughs> 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 Oh man! Well, we will. Uh, we'll definitely have to keep that. Like, I, I don't know what we do with that because we don't know now if he's just questionable. But obviously, if you practice full and now it's questionable, that's a bad sign. You know, just being downgraded at the end of the week, the classic bad sign. So I am. I'm gonna legitimately message Chow on Twitter and see if he. All right. Let us know. I, All right. Let's I talk think about- the. Uh, I think the optimal move is to just lock. Brett Hundley into your cash game lineups, no matter what. Dude, he's a lock. You, you, I mean, you can just swap to Brandon Allen. Who, who doesn't want to do that? Who, who, who might not even start? Wait, Drew Locke's starting. Oh yeah, Drew Locke's starting. Yeah. <laughs> what what is Locke even? Forty eight hundred still has yeah, IR so next can't. to his name on DraftKings. <laughs> can't do that. <laughs> Her, uh, the Cards beat writer said they'd be surprised if he didn't play. All right. Uh, well, that was a fun five minutes. All right, let's uh, let's move on to quarterbacks. Davis, you go first. Well, everyone has a really difficult decision on DraftKings because Lamar Jackson, not even the most expensive player in the player pool, despite scoring the second most DraftKings fantasy points this year. That's because uh, uh, San to Francisco. Only McCaffrey. Defenses, bro. DVP. Right. So that's why his price is like that. Um, but the 49ers, like, they, they've not been great against the mobile quarterbacks. They, they lost to Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks and Kyler was able to, he got like 25 points in the first game against them. And yeah, 26 in, 26 in the second one. So I, I am of no, like, I'm not concerned about playing Lamar in cash at all. The thing is, is, in this matchup, I don't think there's anyone you particularly want to stack with him. I don't think that you want to use Marquise Brown. I don't think that you want to use um, Mark Andrews, who is, I, I guess, 5700 is a pretty reasonable price tag for him. But so that just makes it tough to use him in tournaments. And also the the 49ers bring backs. I mean, I, I guess it's I guess it's Kittle. Um, I, I'm not trying to use Debo or Manny Sanders at their prices probably. So I, I think that's a very tough question. Is Debo? I haven't seen the. I guess he's okay. You want me to he's follow fine. up on my initial tweet to Chow? Yeah. Does not have. He doesn't have an injury designation for this right. Sunday's game. If uh, if Davis doesn't just lock in Lamar, he is the fakest. Defenses don't matter tout ever. I'm playing. I'm playing him in cash, but I. I like I just said. I do think that he's kind of. It's just weird to use him in tournaments because you have to use him. Like unstacked, basically, and that just that goes against like every other like I stack every quarterback. Let, let me clarify: Davis is playing him until an hour and a half before lineup lock when a high stakes player tells them that he's playing <laughs> yeah. Carson Wentz. Yeah. No, which, here's the thing. Which here's Davis the thing, dude. I'm pivot. not if I'm not playing Carson Wentz, dude. And if I do play Carson Wentz, literally just don't listen to the Gill cast. Don't give me clicks anymore because it just means I'm a fraud. What if that a would, that would actually be very good for them. Duck Hodges? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, that, 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 to, to be fair, the Duck does have a very high game total to go along. <laughs> you know, makes him makes him a very appealing play. Well, the reason I'm excited about Duck is because I think Dalton's going to draw a lot of ownership at 400 less. Um, so I think Duck really kind of flies under the radar. When you say a lot of ownership, <laughs> what do you think? Well, Dave, just imagine if I wanted to devote, say, one-tenth of my energy and effort into Duck Hodges' week as I did Patrick Laird. Just think <laughs> of the ownership that I could do. I mean, over 1% on Patrick Laird is like like Peter. Like You should actually feel... 
like pretty great about that that he that he went from being pr- potentially not owned by one person in the Millionaire Maker to one percent. It, it's pretty incredible. Did you? I'm see, proud of you. Even Ma- Matthew Barry on Sunday morning sent me a little <laughs> video of him putting Patrick Laird in his Scott Fishbowl lineup. It made it all the way to the top, baby. Scott Hansen. And ESPN. then. There was a little long-haired snake. Oh, yeah. Let's, uh, let's, let's talk about this because as someone who is big on brand, Davis, uh, he tried to do, he tried to intercept the, the brand play a little bit. Yeah. Both, uh, Davis and I, uh, unbeknownst to each other have been in Patrick Laird's DMs. <laughs> not, not unbeknownst. You knew I was messaging him and I knew you did too. <laughs> Dude, I mean, this is finding out your girls talking to this. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's a total you versus the guys you told you not to worry about situation. We saw, which, we saw which, which one of us is which one wanna, of us is the guy Davis's. not to worry about. Uh, I I will just I'll read it out loud right now. Oh, God, let me go. Gonna be good. I I mean I don't think it's that good. I I just totally sucked up to him, of course. <laughs> That's why I mean, you want to come on the take cast? Uh, hey, I've got this. Uh... Hey, Patrick, I was wondering if you might have any interest in coming on my podcast. Brian Hill of the Falcons did it a few weeks ago, and it was oh, very well Falcons. received. The, od- the audience would absolutely love an episode featuring you. Let me know. And he said, thanks for the invite. Maybe after a win, we can set something up. Hope that's all right. And look, look at just to show the approaches that Davis and I take. You want to hear what? uh what I did? Yeah. This was, I, I lay the groundwork. This is, uh, on Monday, I say, listen to this. Hey man, is there any way to make a donation to your reading challenge program? That's what the pros do, Davis. Then, on, okay. Rick, you can't, you can't teach that. You can't teach that level of skill. <laughs> then though, so we have a little back and forth. So on, on Thanksgiving, my Thanksgiving, I'm over at my in-laws. I have a Manhattan in my hand. Just a nice day. I get a DM from Patrick Laird. I mean, my emotion, enthusiasm is through the roof. This is what the DM says. I told Davis Maddock I'd do an interview after a win, so I'll make the same deal with you. Throw the phone across the room. Never been so tilted. Yeah, that's dirty. It said Swolecast on Swolecast Crime is what it is. It's so, not because I'm just gonna have Peter on my show and get him more exposure. Peter doesn't care about exposure. We've already talked about this. I care about. Uh, he does. He he does. Hey Davis, I care about content for the sake of content. <laughs> <laughs> Our Rotor Grinders account has like 110,000 followers, and Peter literally says, "Do not tag me." Probably because the quality not, of the video. It's not. It's not. It's it's not good businessmanship. IMO. All right. Let's uh, let's talk more about some quarterbacks. Tuttle, let's get your take. You mentioned the game stacks. Maybe Jared Goff? Yeah, he's not cheap, though. Like on FanDuel, he's still 7,900. Uh, I do think it's a pretty good buy low spot for that game in general. Obviously, would like it better if Kyler was in there. Have more confidence that it would go back and forth a little bit. Um, but in cash games, yeah, I, I think you're looking at the top end. Lamar Jackson, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes, I think is playable as well. Um, I, I don't think I can pull the Carson Wentz trigger either. I, I know that's getting thrown around a little bit. Um, I don't know if I can do it. I, 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 I just absolutely cannot. I just, I, please don't make me. Like maybe, I, maybe Nick Foles even over Carson Wentz? Maybe. I mean, just in, just anyone, dude. Carson Wentz in cash this year has been just an a uh, he sucks, dude. Did you watch those throws against Seattle? He, he missed Miles Sanders wide open on the first drive, and you just knew it was going to be one of those days. They're bad. Like you but, just you just knew. But the other thing is that like Miami is not Seattle. Like that that'd be the takeaway that like Miami is so bad that people are going to score on. But them. Wentz has already failed in these spots twice this year. And super easy, like like Eagles huge team total, and and he just has not been good. I mean, they had a huge team total against the Redskins week one. Of course, they got down two scores early, and that's why. Exactly. But yeah, but I mean, I I think I think he's a fine play. I definitely definitely don't think he's like a a chalk or a safe play. You know who's safer? Ryan Tannehill. I think I would just go down to Andy Dalton. Ryan Tannehill, since he took over starting from Marcus Mariota, he no, has second. scored the second most second, fantasy yeah. points behind Lamar Jackson. That's right. 
6.68, minimum 150 attempts. We all read Silva's matchup. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do not read Silva's matchup column, so I did not know that that was a point he made. I mean, we, I, I think we can rely on him to to keep scoring touchdowns with his legs. I think that will will continue to happen. Uh, I mean, well, he does. Tuttle, he d- uh, Davis, give Tuttle the scouting report. Tell tell Tuttle what he used to be. Sir, he was this be before or after multiple knee surgeries or? This is, he's he had like a year. To, All right, boot, to boots on, boots on the ground kitchen. Are you playing Ryan Tannehill in cash? Oh no, but probably not in cash. But I don't know. Wait, maybe. Were you just doing disingenuous comedy touting, Dave? No, I do think Tannehill he, he, is what, safer. That was that was very disingenuous comedy touting. <laughs> uh, I would take once over Tannehill this week. Dude, once it, over Tannehill. Dude has yeah, thrown I don't have eighteen pass that. attempts last week for Tannehill. Nineteen the week before. Yeah. It's a good thing. I mean, our, 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 our projections, of the week. our, our projections say Carson, like Carson Wentz is in like 80% of the top 100 optimals. Okay. I, like I don't, he just, he, he is the, he is the math play, but I, I just, I can't. I am playing Lamar in cash. All right. All right. Uh, let's move on unless anyone has any other hot takes. I w- like legitimate question. Why isn't Nick Foles popping in more optos? I mean, how big is their team total? Twenty-two. I mean, it's fine, but like, I, I guess we have a we have a very large chunk of their stuff projected on the ground. I'd guess. But, but why, why, Davis? Haven't you heard? The Bucks are a pass funnel, bro. Funnel. <laughs> I, I can't listen funnel. to you. I can't listen to you unless you actually have the funnel. <laughs> no, but I mean, but we have we have Nick. Ta- we have Nick Foles projected for the ninth most fantasy points of quarterbacks on the slate, but we have Carson Wentz projected for the third most. It just seems weird to me. We've been attacking the Bucks' pass defense all year. Like, why would we? Why would we stop now? And what's wrong with Foles and Shark and Conley? It seems like it sets up nicely. Sh- Shark Week. I also love how everyone's off of Patrick Mahomes this week too. Just. In this economy, Dave, I don't know if we're I don't know if we're off him per se. It uh, feels like everyone's off of him just because of uh, his price and basically other other matchups. I mean, Davis, in your GPPs, what would you put him at? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> That's a, this is the first <laughs> I don't, I don't time know. in Davis's life that he's ever answered something. Uh, about. Usually, you just make something up. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I, like, I've not even done a preliminary run of 150 because I was busy focusing on Thanksgiving. So I've, I've not. I'm actually, it's actually a good reason. I'm going to give you a pass, Davis. Let's, uh, let's create a DraftKings lineup. This will be good. I just, like, I'm tilting that we, we need, we need in Keel Harry Tuttle. We, we need him. I have, uh, I have, no, I'm not going to say that one. No, nope. well, there, there is one. Thing? I have like a really, really bad take. I, I have a, I have a, a very gross take. Okay, let's hear it. At, at cheap wide receiver at Demarius. Oh, that's not gross on DraftKings. That's not that bad. All right. I, I had to research for the terrible take because I've been getting called mm-hmm. out for, for, <laughs> for the segment. For, yeah, you've been getting called out because people say that you are contemplating taking up time on the show. And yeah. they said this I mean, is the yeah, one it, thing you should study up for, so let's have it. You su- you surprise me every week. I don't know what's coming. <laughs> I can't yeah. do anything about it. No, this is the, so we're just making a lineup now. I'm not going to put the terrible take in the lineup. All right. Um so for this lineup, we're going to do a we're going to do a little Cooper Cup. I like it. That is you. You you've, you started with a pretty gross play. I mean, if gross is getting thirty fantasy points, then yeah, pretty gross one. All right, All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna. Uh... Dude, his game logs are a tough, tough scene. Yeah, see, we get this is the perfect week to capitalize on all the when when he's game more expensive donkeys. than he's more expensive than Devonte Adams and Mike Evans. Yes, exactly. Yeah, you're right. It's a good Some, time. Somebody yeah. obviously hasn't looked at the weather forecasts. All right, I'm uh I'm gonna go ahead and pick Tyler Boyd at 5,500. Everyone's staying on brand right now. 
Let me go next so I can stay on brand. Do it. Christian Kirk. With Brett Hundley? Are we bringing it back? No. I, I was putting the onus on uh, someone else to make the quarterback decision. <laughs> All okay. right. Uh, Davis? Jonathan, Jonathan Williams? Against that Titans defense, bro? That's a, that's a very off-brand. Yeah, that's bro. off-brand, dude. Are, are, is this your new, like, Bo Scarborough thing? You just pick love him, all pick these plotters? Pick, pick him up, pick him up in all my seasonal leagues. Ate that 20-pointer last week, so I'm big Jonathan Williams fan. <laughs> this is disingenuous, Chowdy. <laughs> that is not disingenuous in any way. That is that is genuous, well, sir. <laughs> Davis, you said that you would never play Derrick Henry because he never got more than three targets a game. Bro, he, Jonathan he, Williams got three targets and three receptions in his first NFL start. Okay, but do you, but it seems like oh, if they, uh, if they have to uh, pass the ball, they'll uh, go to uh, Naeem uh, Hines. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, but you Derrick think? Henry gets three every time too, and you, like, oh, Derrick, Derrick is, Henry gets, Derrick Henry gets three every time? Yeah, pretty much. You know, you, know, you know how many times he's gotten three targets this year? Who needs Twice in 12 games. Twice running. in 12 games. So every so, time. Almost so, every time. So something that's going to happen is Jordan Wilkins is going to see more than one snap this week. Why would Jonathan Williams why is would, such a bad play? I actually, why I would Jordan Wilkins see more snaps than last week? Just because he got an, another week back from the ankle injury. Yeah, he was only like, wasn't active, Williams, supposedly for like emergency role last week. I, that, what isn't that why the whole Williams thing was surprising in the first place? Because Wilkins had been running clearly as the number two behind Mac all season, but right. he'd been hurt for a month, and then right. I I just the way I don't I. It's it would be rare for a third string running back to have some sort of uh pres- like cachet with the coaching staff to send a guy who just ran for a hundred yards two games in a row back to the bench. I agree with you. I would I would put no. I would put one BTC over one snap, but I think that projecting him for like anything more than twenty five percent market share of rushing attempts would be bad. We've hit the uh, coaching cachet. Part of the show. And the wagering <laughs> BTC parts. Dave, you need, Davis, you need to hodl that, man. You can't be risking it on Snap. I bought, I bought, I bought more, I bought more yesterday and on Monday. Yeah, dude. I bought, I need good. to just, you need to stop with the impulse emotional buys, get you dollar cost averaging. I, I buy, I have a, I have a weekly buy setup too. I just, I, when it gets below 8K, I just buy more though. All right. Fair. All right. Uh, Tuttle? Back to me, eh? Yeah. All right. Let's go with. Can we fit him in? Huh. I'm gonna go see Mac and see what you guys have to do to get him in. Ooh. Chris as long McCaffrey. as we don't play. As long as we don't play Lamar, it's not like that terrible. Nice, All right. But yeah. Uh. Well, I'm gonna go cheap at tight end then. Dude, there but are so many Gerald good cheap Everett, tight end plays. Gerald Everett. Gerald Everett is out this week. So uh yeah, we're Higby going, is the men. We're going with Higby at twenty five hundred. Very nice. Very nice. We still haven't picked a quarterback yet. This this is the furthest we've ever gone through a DraftKings lineup without picking a quarterback. I mean we've just we've clearly just given up if we're not trying to stack like it's just Wait, like we're is, like, what, is, like, this is for cash, right? Yeah. Okay. So we don't Jared, have to stack. Yeah, Jared I thought Goff. stacking might be a little bit too aggressive for cash. <laughs> this is for cash, so I'm I'm picking Jared Goff. Yeah. All right. Good. And then um, oh yeah, the double since, deck. I like it. Yeah. So we're gonna oh do gosh. the double. We're gonna do the double reverse mega mind and use the Schmerz Mona Schmardnels defense. No. What? No. Stop. Davis. No. Davis. It's Davis. donkey. That's Davis. like that's, that's so what I disingenuous, saved. dude. Like that's the most disingenuous thing I've ever. <laughs> I, heard I, I actually show. have the Cardinals defense saved in cash right now. I think they're the best play. Well, that's, that's fine, but we have a, like a double stack, so you're not gonna play them. <laughs> Jeez. Well, it was it was honestly disin it was honestly disingenuous of Peter to uh to to drop to correlate our lineup. lineup, dude. It's so f- you know you know what I'm gonna do. This is sexy. I'm gonna play the Schmeevlin Schmounds defense. Wow, you're you're being very disingenuous to brother Peter. <laughs> Why? This leaves Against us Jack just Hodges. enough room to play Toby Canderson. <laughs> well, yes. We do have that. Or LaShawn McCoy, if you think that he's going to get all the, the, the run with the ones. We do need to talk about that. Let's go ahead and just transition to running back. Davis, with the news that Damian Williams is out, what does that do as far as Daryl Williams and Shady McCoy? 
So the way that we have it projected right now, uh, these guys are not making optimals, I, neither LaShawn McCoy or Daryl Williams, but we have it projected pretty close. So we have, um, LaShawn, we have LaShawn McCoy with like 8% of the team's targets. Daryl Williams projected for like six, and then we have it split 43%, 38% with the rushes. If you think, like if you have a read that Daryl Williams is going to be the passing down back or LaShawn McCoy is just going to have all, like he's going to play 75% of the snaps. Like these guys are, are locks basically. Um, but I, I just personally don't have a great feel for how they're going to use them. Uh, Tuttle, yeah. Shady or Daryl? Shady. I, I, Shady is much more likely to score, I think. Can I mean, they're 400 dollars difference, uh, Peter, Shady or Daryl? Well, I'm going to give you guys a boots on the ground take because people forget I was in Mexico City for this okay. Chiefs yep. Chargers game. And I will tell you, they had no interest in using LaShawn McCoy until Damian Williams pulled up. Uh, yeah, Andrew. that's true. They brought him in a few times after Williams had like a longer play and he needed a spell and McCoy got that TD, but it did not look like he was part of their game plan. I, and I definitely think Daryl Williams is going to be the pass catching back. So, so if I may, if I may, uh, go back to the coaching cachet. Yes. We, please. we actually, we actually do see this with running backs a lot of the time where the one running back who plays like the passing downs and the, and the whatever, they just stay in their role. And when the other running back gets injured, that guy stays in the same role. And then the guy that didn't play at all comes back in and plays the other role. I, that to me does seem possible that LaShawn McCoy just plays the Damian snaps and Daryl stays in his snaps. All right. Um, let's talk about C Mac really quick. Is he just a lock button in all cash formats, Davis? I am very likely playing him. I do not think that he's a lock button. I think that there are enough good running back plays with some of this value that is opening up that you could get away from him, especially because like we're seeing reduced prices for Devontae Adams, Mike Evans, uh like to I I the thing is, is you're probably punting tight end. So if you, if you don't play Lamar, he's a lock. If you do play Lamar, you're going to have to play at least one wide receiver that you for real hate. <laughs> uh, Peter, you, you think that C-Mac is a lock button, I'm guessing. I'm playing him in all my head to head lineups. Okay. You head to head GPP lineups? All your head to head GPP lineups? All my head to head GPPs. Patrick Laird opens up the salary to get you Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, I think you play him. And then the other question is Miles Sanders. Are those are those running backs one and two, Tuttle? Yep, I think yeah. so. I kind of hope people don't play Sanders after because his results have not been very good. But he he is like he's the first guy I clicked when I made my placeholder. All right. I, so. uh, I actually just wanted to comment and say I'm surprised that we made it through that Kansas City segment without somebody mentioning Darwin Thompson. We're all growing. I mean, what, what's, what's the what's what's the what's the most snaps Darwin has played this year? <laughs> that I <laughs> wouldn't expect that to keep you from touting him. If we're being but, honest, I have not I have not once played Darwin nor touted him at all. I played Daryl when at the game earlier when uh, Damian. Oh, I, I bet I could do some Davis Maddock Darwin tweets right off. Oh, I touted him for sure for season long. <laughs> for season long, Darwin. All right. But I mean, it was clear from the first game that he was not a thing. All right. He, he, he topped out, he topped out in Mexico. Or, or no, no, against Tennessee with five snaps. He was inactive in Mexico. But I heard that steady drum beat all That, that steady long. drum beat. All right, Davis, you're the, uh, the Fournette fan, so let's hear your <laughs> Fournette take for this week. Well, here's the thing, man. You can't, you can't play him because of the funnel. You can't play him because of the funnel, right? No, our, our stuff loves him, has him as the second value running back, has him in, um, like 85% of the top 100 optimals. So I, I, I'm not going to play him in cash because I hate math apparently, but, uh, I, I do think he's very clearly a strong play on both sides. What's his, what's his fan duel price total? I don't even know who we're talking about. Uh, Leonard he, I, I just know, I just know Fournette has been like stone cold free on Vandal the last yeah. two weeks. Yeah. So pretty cheap. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. This was a, a little bit shocking when I looked at the, the the expert filters that we have on the Roto Grinders lineup HQ, and I looked at the Goto Noto core plays. The core plays 
And he had a guy that has burned me too many times this season, Mr. Saquon, as a core play. On I mean, does Kings. he has he watched Saquon play? Dot com. I want to ask him the same thing. I want to like this is this is concerning me that I even have to consider Saquon again. Like full disclosure, I played Saquon last week and on Fanduel, and he he prevented me from getting all the monies. And which, I don't want to uh, play Saquon. Which disingenuous Schadenfreude Saquon Barkley stat do the people want to hear? Because I have a couple. So which like take your pick. Go ahead, just hit it, hit us with it. Okay, so the first yeah, do one yards is that... per carry or yards uh, like per carry after contact. That was a good one. I don't even I don't even know that one. The two that I know that are really funny are that he has created exactly zero yards above replacement, at, like relative to what uh, the average running back would gain per Football Outsiders. And out of every running back with a minimum of fifty rush attempts, he has the lowest success rate of all running backs in the NFL. So that just that brings me great joy uh, for the New York Giants football organization. Ooh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a tough one. I'm gonna have to talk to my boy Noto about that. All right, um, any GPP plays you guys like for running back this week? Uh, uh, go for it, uh, Peter. You I, 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 your I eyes lit up. Hold on, hold on, Davis. No, Davis is gonna like this. Yeah, I know who it is. You do it instead of me, Rojo. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I thought I thought you were gonna tout du- the Duck brother. Who? Benny, Benny Snell. Snell. Oh, Benny. Nah, no. It's Benny more of a, it's more of a fa- it's more of a Fanduel play, and you don't play on Fanduel anymore. Uh, Benny Snell is like. Oh, a rich- look at Davis. <laughs> look at Davis. He plays on Fanduel two times, and hey, he hang on, talks hang on. down to Peter. Ask me how much money I have in my Fanduel account. Oh, dude, how much money do you have in your Fanduel account? Three hundred eighty-two dollars and seventy cents. Dude, you're beating hey. me. I have three hundred eighty dollars and eight cents. You're crushing oh, me. Oh, suck it, dude. <laughs> um, suck people it. don't like Peter. D- does not want me to tell this, but like he did really well in Fanduel last week and in tournaments too. Yes, dude, wow. Yeah. Did you just hear that account balance, dude? It sounds it's, really well to uh, me. Let's just say the uh, my VIP account representative uh, hit me up. <laughs> 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 They're putting me. In the box seats. Yeah. At Foxborough this week. It's going to be nice. All right. Do we have any GPP takes? Um, Aaron Jones has some coach speak in his favor. Really? I think, I think the last time he was targeted, he was at UTEP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's cheap on DraftKings. Boots, boots on the ground. Kind of expensive on FanDuel. A- Adams just kills his upside, I think. He's got the co- you gotta gotta play the coach speak, man. The the coach Actually, is so I like the Rams too much, but the the corpse of Todd Gurley. No, you love like the GPP what is play. Go- of what's Todd going on Gurley. with you, man? Even I don't, even, I don't even, understand it. I even like in it. last week's blowout, he was on the field for fifty of fifty two snaps. He is he's if if you think this game is going to be a shootout, which I do, and you think Gurley's gonna be on the field for ninety percent of the snaps, which I do then he's got to be a pretty decent play at his price. Davis, what happened to Malcolm Brown, bro? Yeah. Um, so what happened to Malcolm <laughs> Brown? Jared Goff lied. He, he, he got, no, he got his shot, and he was bad, and he got hurt. So he, he was combination bad and then hurt his ankle and was out for the next month. And uh, NFL running backs, man, if, if you get hurt in the middle of the season, it's just your coach, the coach cachet, bro. It's just the Jordan Wilkins scenario. You're, you're just to the bench. All right, I'm going to uh... – <clears throat> Going to give another Eric Byam for conviction play just because he's been on fire. One of his running back conviction plays this week is Kenyon Drake. Yeah, I think that's a fun one. Can, can we t- can we take a moment of silence for David Johnson right now? Dude, it's yeah, too look. it's too emotional. All right, I was really afraid Tuttle was going to ruin that, but he didn't. All right, um, Tuttle's constantly talking too much. I know, he's just, he's just like interrupting. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know if he was going to do that. Let's move to wide Sorry, receivers. <laughs> and uh, let's go ahead and just talk about some of our favorite wide receivers, what we're going to do this week, which wide receiver from which team we're going to play, and nail it and not get it wrong because people have been people have been getting confused with their wide receivers the past few weeks. So, Davis, hit us with some wide receiver talk. 
Well, Mike Evans is the first one. Like when I opened up the slate, that that uh, that leaped out, that leapt out of to course, me. I mean, of course, I mean, because him, you always get the Tampa Bay receivers right. Not you. I'm just, just saying, like a general you. Like that. That's the guy I was talking about. Well, and Adams is Adams is our second highest projected wide receiver of the week, despite being at seven thousand. So that he he seems like probably a guy who's going to be like very popular in cash games. Shark is, uh, he's getting up there in price, but you can't say that he, he doesn't deserve it. And I, I, I'm very sorry to do this to everyone. Um, if, if you are, if you are easily triggered, just, uh, mute this for the next five seconds. But Sammy Watkins is, uh, going to be on the field for 80% of the snaps, seeing a fair amount of targets from the best quarterback in the NFL. The Chiefs have a 30 and a half point team total. They're going to be down. They're starting running back. It, it, it it's Bi- if you, if, model. He's in the bylaw model. Oh, he's in the bylaw. <laughs> he's, he's in the, the bylaw model. model. Yeah, I, I, I think Watkins is probably the best price plate wide receiver of the whole slate, other than Adams. Oh. Does it, it does not bring me any joy to say this? And uh, wow. when Sammy there, Watkins there are says, a bunch of receivers around that price point, and for you just to go ahead and. Put him head and shoulders, but the other uh, the other ones are interesting. Little uh, boots on the brown uh, ground uh, bias there coming in, I think. Maybe I don't, I don't even live in Kansas City anymore, and Sammy Watkins has literally <laughs> just stolen money from me, uh, basically all season long, other than the first week. Which is why I'm surprised. Do the math I like is the Sammy math too, but it is hard not to play Robert Woods or Tyler Boyd for a hundred more. How are you missing out on your brand play there, Davis? Christian Kirk, Robert Woods, Tyler Boyd. I mean, well, I mean, can we play Brett Hundley's number one wide receiver? Let me see if Chow got, I mean, Davis, (laughs) Davis has fading, has fading a chalky Christian Kirk ever gone wrong for you. My my goodness, man. Isn't uh? wait, hold on. Can I, can I get, uh, can I, I, I wish I had some prop glasses to put on right now. I'm turning my hat for it, and this signifies that I'm, I've been grinding the film. Uh, isn't isn't Jalen Ramsey going to cover Christian Kirk? <laughs> I love how Peter has his props. <laughs> Peter has his props ready to go. Right away. He's just, like, digging in his... <laughs> the real question is, could Jalen Ramsey go into the slot with Larry Fitzgerald a little bit more? Or could he potentially track Christian Kirk outside, who now plays exclusively outside, and it's completely killed his production? Yeah. Uh, I just broke my prop glasses. Oh, no. Shit. Bless his heart. All right. Uh, Tuttle, you got any wide receiver takes? Kelvin Harmon. Terrible take of the week. Oh, my, oh, my God. That's my not God. the reaction I was looking for. <laughs> his... Uh, <laughs> Coming fresh off that. Dude, that's we, so we, disingenuous. <laughs> They're the most disingenuous talent in the history of this show. <laughs> Coming fresh off that win. Oh man, uh, give your give your Kelman Harmon love. I like. I, I like season, that you're at least. I, I love that you at least like research this. And, and so I would only play him in cash games. Oh sure, um, right? Of course. Yeah, clearly cash only. <laughs> Because I would say he's got a better floor than ceiling, per mm-hmm. se. Yeah. No, but he's uh, Paul Richardson out. We got my boy Calvin Harmon stepping up. He's been second in the team in targets over the last two weeks. You know, he's just he's just going to eat. Calvin Dude. Harmon's going to eat. And it's also really good leverage on the Terry McLaurin ownership. Mm. Yeah, I, I, whenever I can get leverage off of, like, a 5% owned guy, I, I do it as much as yeah, I Yeah, but that's – here's Tuttle. It's mega leverage, though. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, mega leverage. Actually, mega leverage. I mean, why not? Why not throw Terry McLaurin and Dwayne Haskins stacks in there too, right? And risk my quarterback in the stands taking a selfie while the game's going on? No way, Tuttle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we've we've mentioned this guy before, but Alden Tate, like it, it, this Bengals team just has to be. The passing that's the, game just that's has the to thing. Be like, I can't believe you. I can't believe you just touted Tyler Boyd, who's like been one of the most like wide range of outcomes players this year. Yeah, like Watkins a, is like the same thing. So I don't know if you know this, but, but Tyler Boyd actually has a better quarterback throwing to him this week. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying is that like the passing game is better, so Boyd should be better. Boyd coming off a game last week that was good. Like this Bengals team has to be better. They've been so bad that they can now start their quarterback. That's how bad they have been. 
So what, uh, through week eight was when Dalton played through? Just look, just, yeah. just listen to these Tyler Boyd target totals to start the year. 12, 10, 11, 6, 14, 7, 14, 9. Seems, seems alright. Seems pretty good. Uh, Davis, thoughts on Devontae Parker? Kitchen, um, you 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 finally got one right, bud. You you touted Devonte <laughs> Parker for enough seasons in a row, and and all that had to happen up. was a, I mean, there just had to be like a final destination <laughs> style series in Miami where uh, Preston Williams got injured, Kenyon Drake got traded. They refused to sign a veteran tight end uh, other than Durham Smythe. They actually cut Nick O'Leary, mm. and uh, you know Albert Wilson got hurt. Like, it, this is what had to happen for a Devonte Parker uh, wide receiver twenty eight season, and buddy. He is right. he is committing to it. Did uh, does Josh Doxson get cut this week, Davis? Oh, does Josh so- Josh Doxson, I believe, is a, a, a St. Louis Battlehawk of the of the yeah. XFL. Yeah, well, it's definitely not in the NFL. That was a that was a really. Didn't you bad... lose that bet though? No, I won that bet. I don't know if that's All right. true. I did. All right. Uh, other any other? We haven't really talked about high priced wide receivers. Like, is this just a mid? I mean, Maybe. everyone's too afraid to tout the good place because because you might get the 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 other teammate might score points. I want some boots on the ground info for Devonte Tuttle. Seems like a pretty safe play. He does seem like a pretty safe play. Um, I actually am kind of holding out for the. Uh, do we have a Roth re- weather report? Oh, is it is it gonna snow? Ooh, the whole East Coast is is brutal. Oh. Man, Kevin Roth, WX. Yeah, I'm still waiting on the Roth, the Roth weather report, but, uh, the current forecast, 92% chance of precip throughout the game, 38 degrees, nine miles what per you hour, don't, double what digit you, what mile you, per hour winds. What you don't realize though is that Aaron Rodgers, uh, on every third and seven is just, just throws it to Devontae Adams. That's that, they just call that play. They just call, uh, Rodgers throws this to Devontae. Hard to get third and seven when Aaron Jones is rushing for a first down every other play. That's true. Very good point. Very good point, Tuttle. V- right. VGP, as we say <clears throat> on the internet. Let's uh, let's go to our FanDuel.com NFL lineups. Our lineup last week was actually like probably the best lineup that I had last week. The I lineup actually, the, I didn't actually play the it. lineup the week before on FanDuel also. This That's, was like the Caden Smith, Mitchell Trubisky to, to Allen Robinson. That the, how how dare we disingenuously tout Caden Smith? There were people out here joshing Caden Smith to the people, man. He played he played every snap and and was second on the team in receptions. Sammy people Reed people had a good show. Yeah, people, people I was the one that touted Caden Smith. Scott Simonson was going to to come and steal the show. No, Sammy was who put him in our FanDuel lineup, Davis. Yeah. Oh, is Davis stuff. trying to take credit he's, again? He's trying to take everybody's. Now, stuff. Davis, if you want credit, you can take credit for tanking that swole cast lineup with Amari Cooper two weeks ago. Oh, love that for him. <laughs> Sammy, Sammy legitimately did not know who Caden Smith was until I added him onto our co-owned Superflex team. Well, oh, so you're trying to take advantage of of Sammy's like public call because you privately added him to your I was the one who brought up season Caden. Long I mean team. I'm not I'm not getting into an argument with you but <laughs> I was the one that brought up Caden Smith <laughs> Let us know on Twitter who you guys think was first to Caden Smith <laughs> we'll try this in the court of public opinion <laughs> All right um man that Andy Dalton play on Fandle looks really good but uh, I'm going to hold out someone else can make it Tuttle you go first again all right, on FanDuel, NFL, GPP, cash game. Let's right. start with uh, DJ Shark. 69. 6,900. Over Zet? Let's, uh, let's get my take here. A nice little correlation. A little Ronald Jones. I have yet to play Ronald Jones in a long this season, this will be my first one. One thing, once Keaton Davis looks into the numbers, he'll realize the uh, Jags have been a little bit of a run funnel of late. No oh. comment. Oh, a run funnel. 
So is this is it my pick? Maybe it's because Sa- <laughs> I'm thinking about this uh, Noto core play. I think maybe because Saquon's on Fanduel at 7600. I bet that's the reason why he's so cheap on Fanduel, man. Oh. All right, Davis, go for it. Um, I'll just play Patrick Mahomes. You you made my heart a flutter when you said Patrick there. It doesn't matter yeah. sure where it was gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> Um. All right. If we're playing Patrick Mahomes, then I'll just go ahead and play Devontae Parker at 6K. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, that was some good misdirection there. I fell for it. <laughs> Thank I you. So Tuttle? Good. I mean, if we're playing Devontae Parker, I guess we'll just go ahead and play Travis Kelsey too. No, makes sense. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Just play the best plays. P- PT PTB. <laughs> All right, over it. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. If we're playing Mahomes and Kelsey, yeah, you want to bring it back. Yeah. I hate Josh Jacobs, so I'm not bringing it back with him. If Hunter that. Renfro is gone, yeah. he I, he might be retired. Do you Darren know where Waller I'm going? The, Do you guys know where I'm going? Darren Tell Waller and the mother effing flat. No, no he's going. going. He's going Zay Jones no, for sure. No, <laughs> Tuttle got it, dude. Waller, no Hunter Renfro. Waller back to those ten targets. This game's shooting out. We just nailed it, guys. Boom, pants are off. Congrats to us. All right, uh, Davis. We got about sixty three hundred left per player. That's including a defense, so probably more. So probably more. Probably more. <laughs> the math Has, checks out. Hashtag math. <laughs> uh, I'll go. I'll go. Mike Evans. I love the the pairing there with Rojo. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll go. I'll go Odell. O- Odell. Odell is due a newt game. You don't want to go. All right. Odell is fine, 7,300. That leaves us with 7,100 if we went with someone like the Panthers D. That would, uh, Melvin Gordon, come on down. Probably go cheaper at D and get, let's see, four, you could go 40, you go Rams against Cardinals and then have enough money for either Fournette or Barkley. Probably Barkley. Let's do Barkley. What are we doing at D? Why are why are we stop, dude? This is this is disingenuous <laughs> touting. Sparkles. He's a generational talent, man. Dude, he's he's been like one of the worst running backs on a team that just passes every down. Especially if it's snowing, bro. You got to get him in. There. Oh, it's the snow game. Yeah, it's the snow. Yeah, game. I heard I heard what's really good for running backs that run ten yards behind the line of scrimmage and try and juke a lot. I heard snow is really good for that. Yeah, he's, he's just got to get back to his Penn State roots. He's got to get the <laughs> uh, snow tires on. This is this is his roots. Um, you know what? <clears throat> I should also remind people that it is Dehember season. It is D Hember. Even, even with a bad hammy. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. I, I could, I didn't want to be disingenuous and I, I would have been all in if he wouldn't have missed a lot of practice this week. But they said that, uh, he doesn't like, he, he'll be fine. No injury designation, but man, people that doubted Derrick Henry, they look like absolute fools. They look like people who did math and you hate to see it. Yeah, it, Davis, how do you do math on a guy who's like 6'7", 300 pounds, and runs a 4'3"? You project like, how do you him do... for like his career average in yards per carry yeah, and then multiply you... that by the amount of rushing attempts you expect him to have over the course of the season and then um, turn that into <laughs> fantasy points? Fade your voice. Just got the, the hot takes. Oh, man. He just right. got a little excited about the equation. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Tight end, we've got. We'll just talk about Higby as far as like how much. You, Tight end, just talk about Higby. <laughs> just talk about like, Higby and move on. How much like how much you jam in of, of it's Higby? It's so it's so painful, but yeah, he he's like. He, Davis, what's your, he's he's our generation's Caden Smith. Davis, what's your favorite reason for playing Higby? The flow chart or the flow chart? <laughs> oh no, I forgot. <laughs> He didn't even know what the flow chart was. He didn't even know it. Davis has been focusing on Thanksgiving. He didn't hey, even know. Hey, defenses don't matter. Defenses don't matter. Oh no! So now I have to betray. I have to betray myself to play Tyler Higby. This is. Hor- I mean, I'm gonna do it because he's 2500, and when Everett doesn't play, he plays like every down. But it's it's not gonna be fun. 
Eric Simple Ebron is. also out. So you've got Jack Doyle. Uh, you've got Hunter Henry against the Broncos. We've talked about Waller. Like there are some GPP options for tight end, but it just seems pretty clear, especially if you're playing hey, on, on DraftKings, paying up for Ertz, Waller, Kelsey. These guys are all going to be very low owned because, um, like there, there are, uh, there are a bunch of cheap tight end options. There, there's, uh, Doyle, there's Higby, there's Noah Fant. There are, there are guys below 4,000 who are Wait, pretty playable. You're gonna, uh, we gotta let Dave have his boots on the ground. Delaney John Walker to IR. There we go. Did you yeah. cry, David? A, a little bit. Delaney's just the kind of guy you want, the kind of locker room presence that you want. <laughs> and, uh, you know yeah. what? He did a, we need more of those guys in the Titans locker room. So, uh, shout out to, shout out to Delaney. Uh, John, who's got you though? 3.3k this week on DK. Definitely a good play. So is Jack Doyle. Man, remember when Eric Ebron wasn't a thing? We were so excited about Jack Doyle. I remember that. that was Boy, funny. do I. <laughs> the final takes. Davis. I hope LaShawn McCoy scores DraftKings points because I think I'm going to play a lot of him. Oh, okay. Or or Jonathan Williams or Benny Snell. I don't know. I need another. I need another four point seven to five point three k running back to to like really pop in the projections, uh, so that my lineup on DraftKings works. Yeah, you well. could just play Kelvin Harmon in the flex. That's right. I could. I could just. Uh, well, I could just do what Nate Noling does and and just try and find the guy who's going to be cut next week and then jam that guy in cash as hard as possible. So if anyone has if anyone has nominations for that, let me know. All right. Uh, <laughs> Title, you already gave your yep. terrible take, so got that covered. Peter, final thoughts? Yeah. Let's say that if you don't have at least one team in the Millie Maker with Duck Hodges and Patrick Laird, maybe DFS isn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> Not a duck call. It's All right. Call. I think that will, I think that'll do it. Uh, we've got also, the, uh, we've got lineup HQ express free. If you haven't, uh, done the, like done the app lineup HQ express, it's free this weekend. So download the app or go through the road runners app. There's also a link there, but basically you, you can like make lineups on your app and you, and, and you can export them into DraftKings straight from your phone, like multiple lineups. It's pretty cool. That will do it for the week 13 swole cast. Um, I forgot to tell everyone also to smash the like button. So, Peter. When you smash it? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have nightmares with that noise in my tonight. It's well, I have nightmares it's thinking like, about Kelvin Harmon in my it's lineup. Like the so most, we're even, but. It's like the most feminine duck I've ever heard. <laughs> it's like a. Oh, you want me to bro my duck out a little I bit more? Want, like, brrr, brrr. <laughs> I don't think Just you know what the show sign. I don't know what the duck show. sounds like. I mean, do you like the with like it? That's it's that's bad. It's like the mighty guys, ducks. We, we all we all collectively had a really bad show. <sighs> this people are people are gonna not be into this. Like the mighty ducks, you know, they didn't go like. Brrr, brrr, brrr. No, they went quack quack the quack. Ducks fly together. Yes, exactly. You're. You, Peter right. at Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> Go around the horn like they did in that movie. <laughs> that will do it. I'm glad we're ending on a good note. That will do it for week 13's full cast. Thanks to Simon for producing. Thanks, to everyone, for listening and watching. We appreciate you. we see you next week, week 14, here on RotorGrinders.com. <laughs> <laughs>